While the galactic conflict between the Rebellion and the Empire was set to begin another stage, the training of Luke and Leia officially began its next phase. The duo had been set off to find the world of Ilum, a location that Obi-Wan had said would be the place where Leia would be able to construct her first lightsaber. Luke had already found his saber in the blade that once belonged to his father, as Obi-Wan had given it to them to train with, while en route Luke's optimism towards a safe journey came into question. What do we do if the Empire is here? We have some combat training, but not enough to take down an entire base. Luke wandered over the controls of the ship as Leia prepared her snow gear. She had a lot more hope over the current step of their training than Luke. We won't be here long enough for it to ever come to that, I'm sure of it. I've done my research, and a lightsaber is made of kyber. This planet is filled with it. Luke walked by his sister headed towards the back of the ship. So I'll only be down there for a couple minutes then. Master Kenobi talked as though it would be more than that. Well, maybe he didn't account for our ingenuity. Leia felt a gleaming confidence as the indicator for the ship coming out of hyperspace activated as she called for her brother Luke to take his seat. As the pair watched the blue lights fade, they shared an expression of disbelief. The world looked as though it had been carved by a giant vibro knife. An entire section was missing around the planet's equator and the extent of the Empire's evil only grew. They've been here. Leia's stunned look was only a peek into a mind that was running through so many negative outcomes of what they would see on the surface. How do you carve out an entire planet like that? It just doesn't make any sense. Luke stood up as he prepared for landing, reaching to his side to make sure his lightsaber was still there. As the ship broke the atmosphere, Frost picked at the viewport. A light snow brought some life to a barren and forgotten landscape. It appeared to Luke and Leia that the Empire had done its damage and left. Let's not waste any time here. Leia was the first to step from the ship and the stillness was as bone chilling as the temperature. The brother and sister pair walked for what seemed like miles until they arrived at a large structure of ice. Luke pointed to something that confirmed to them that this is where they needed to be. Look at that structure. I doubt the Empire put that there. Luke then took lead, having his hand at the ready with his lightsaber, while the snow appeared to grow heavier with each step towards the structure. They spotted an entrance at the base of what seemed to be a door at some point. This was carved through. Someone wanted inside here, desperately. Leia kept an eye on all of her surroundings. The last thing she wanted was for a weary stormtrooper to appear out of nowhere. Leia, I can hear your heart beating. Calm down. There's no one here. The sound of a blaster discharging sent a jolt through Luke as he dropped to the ground, covering his sister. Faint voices could be heard echoing throughout the halls of this old Jedi temple. I don't care about it. My weapon discharged. You gotta be careful with that thing. It'll cause this whole place to cave in. That's solid 
ice in here. We'll be fine. Stormtroopers, meaning the Empire wasn't fully complete here, and that Luke and Leia weren't going to find ease here anymore. What do we do? We can't wait here forever. Leia did her best to keep her voice down, and Luke's quick thinking was about to come into play. Leia, did you bring a blaster? Luke's sister brandished a blaster pistol, a much better answer than saying yes at the moment. Luke whispered to his sister that he had an idea, but before he could spring into action, luck played to their advantage. This is TK-421. Patrol complete. Yeah, we're headed back to base. The stormtroopers headed off, but Luke got another idea that was wild, and Leia was certainly not a fan of it. They probably have shiploads full of Kyber back wherever they're headed. We should follow them. Leia immediately protested, stating that whatever they were looking for was going to be found here, not at an Imperial base. It's time we start making our own decisions. This is our path, after all. Luke then ran off, as sneaky as he could, knowing that Leia couldn't shout to make him come back. Though surprising, she didn't follow her brother. Instead, a faint ringing caught her ear. She turned to see a shimmering light peering through the temple as she went off to investigate. Across the galaxy, Obi-Wan Kenobi landed on the Lava Flats world of Navarro. It was here that he was to meet with a rebel strike team that was tasked with raiding an Imperial base in hopes of discovering the location of where Darth Vader's Super Star Destroyer was under construction. Leading the team was a commando by the name of Cara Dune, who was considered a survivor of Alderaan's destruction. It was a title she wasn't exactly agreeing with, as anyone who was on Alderaan didn't survive. She was among the ones that were just lucky to be off-world when the Empire wiped her home from existence. Kenobi could sense the commando's emotions reaching a boiling point as he approached to introduce himself. Greetings, I am Obi-Wan Kenobi. It seems I'm going to be joining you for your mission. Welcome to the strike team, Master Jedi. I'm Cara Dunn. You're just in time for the briefing. He gestured to a fellow soldier as he went over the plan. Right. So we know the Imperial insulation here is nothing to be scoffed at. It's fully stocked and fully armed. A stealth approach would have been recommended, but they have scouts watching every possible entrance and exit. We're going in with the big guns. Once we push through the outer defenses, the logistics division of the base is our target. There we'll find the data towers, and hopefully, our way to Vader and his Star Destroyer. Kenobi found the plan to be sturdy given the situation. I had one question. What is our exit strategy? Surely it won't be an easy one. In the hangar is an Imperial troop transport. If we're lucky, we can snag one of those, and we'll be able to get out of there with as many people as we went in with. There was a lot of hope involved in the plans with the Rebels and Kenobi could understand that quite easily. It was all they had to look for during the reign of the Empire. He readied himself for combat as the troopers set off for the base. It almost felt strange for Obi-Wan to find himself in a combat situation again, especially one that involved the siege of an enemy base. He had a slight concern for battle rust, but that all went away quickly once the first shots were fired. Kenobi activated his saber as blaster fire was traded back and forth between the Rebel Strike Team and Imperial forces. Things seemed to be going well. There was something that was cause for concern. It's a Jedi! Inform command! One of the troopers for the Empire shouted out, and Kenobi immediately turned to Cara Dune, with an expression that clearly read that they had to get moving. Out of willpower alone, the rebels advanced on their Imperial adversaries and secured the outer perimeter. I'm afraid the element of surprise is gone for me. They'll be far more prepared. Just give us more to wipe out. Let's get moving. Cara Dunn charged into the base, and our team quickly followed, with Kenobi catching up to co-lead the charge. The combined might of a Jedi Master and a Rebel Strike team proved to be more than enough to make it to the Data Towers, where they combed through everything until they could find the slightest hint to Vader's whereabouts. Here, a file called Executor ISD. This has to be it. Let's extract it and get moving. It was unbeknownst to them that the task of escaping the base was about to become far more complicated. Word that a Jedi was a part of this assault had got out and reached the ears of bounty hunters who all were extremely curious to investigate 
if this was Obi-Wan Kenobi.